Hi, this is going to be a quick video for my students who are using the PIC 16F88 microcontroller for their A-level electronics projects. Now, if like me, you want to use quite a few inputs and outputs, you're probably going to use bits from both port A and port B. Now, I'm representing the outputs here using these two LED arrays. They're just banks of LEDs, okay, in a nice convenient package. So this LED array here is showing me the output status from uh, from port A. So I've got uh, RA0, 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm not using 5. I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, 6 and 7. And then, although that this is a uh, 10 LED array here, I think it's 10, um, I'm only using 4 of them. I'm just outputting uh, RB2, 3, 4 and 5. Okay, so... Um, if you're one of my students, you're probably already familiar with knowing how to use outputs and in inputs and outputs for port B. I'm going to explain about port A, okay? I keep on pointing to these LEDs. Of course, these are not actually port A. Port A is in the microcontroller, but you know we're getting the outputs displayed there. So I want this video to really help you find the information yourselves or be able to at least reference it yourself. So let's just uh, zoom in a little bit. And so this was printed from the data sheet. So I've got the data sheet for the PIC 16F88. And uh, you can Google the same thing. And here we use this package, the dip package, plastic dip package. It's 18 pins and I'm sure if you're one of my students, you're already at least partly familiar with this. And you know that if we're going to use the in-circuit serial programming, uh, which I've got connected up there, then we need to use programming data pin. These, these functions here are multiplexed onto one pin, okay? So programming data, programming clock, and we also need the master clear, which is an active low. Now, I strongly recommend if you're one of my students to avoid using these three pins, these ones I've highlighted for any purpose other than using ICSP. You can, uh, but you really need to know what you're doing. And uh, because you probably don't need that many inputs and outputs, I mean, look, I've got loads of outputs there. And I've still got a, a couple more uh, inputs. I mean, I've got an input there and I've still left myself room for uh, a couple more inputs. Really, I don't think you're going to need to use one of those three highlighted ones there. So avoid them, okay? And that was the reason why RA5, I think I mentioned it earlier, that 3, 4, and then I skipped 5 and then went straight to RA6, okay? Um, I started at RB2 because I wanted to use 0 and 1 for inputs. Um, it doesn't have to be 0 and 1 that I use for inputs, but I want to use RB0 or I want to use the external interrupt, which is that pin, pin 6. So if you want to use interrupts, then that's that's a convenient one to use, okay? I'll just turn that off for the moment. So let's, let's whiz through some other pages I've printed off. It's not entirely at random. I have, there is a, a method to what I've, uh, been doing so you can get all of this information from the data sheet and so what have we got here register file maps so these are the special function registers and you'll see that in bank one remember on the PIC 16F88 there are four banks okay and one of those banks which happens to be bank one has this register this file register which is called ANCEL and it's the analog select register now that's important because some of the pins that we're going to use, like, let's just go back a moment, uh, like for example, RA0, RA0, which is presented on pin 17, has a dual purpose function. It's multiplexed, okay? So you can use it for analog input. You could also use it for digital IO. So you've got to watch out for that. And you're going to find that unless you configure the analog select register, you won't be able to use it for digital I.O. Now, uh, that's on page 13, in case you're looking for it. Let's have a look at another page. So remember, we were looking in bank one. So then I, I go on to this. This gives me more information. I'm looking at the table for bank one. That's important, otherwise you won't find it. 
and you'll see that in bank one there's the analog select register that's uh, you, you get more details here so you can see that there are um, well one two three four five six seven of course it's seven because it's um, analog select from zero to six okay and so we've got um, seven bits in this file register and this column here power on reset and brownout reset so basically if the microcontroller resets these are the default values okay now it says about details on page 120 i don't think i've actually printed off page 120 i've probably had a look at it but you know maybe there's something useful to have a look out there you've got to bear in mind that these are all default to ones now if you um, have a one then what that means is that that pin which is multiplexed is going to be uh, selected for analog input okay now if you want to use that pin for digital io so let's say that i want to use you know that pin uh, pin 17 which is multiplexed between ra0 and which is digital io or an0 then what we're going to need to do we're going to need to make this bit of the analog select register zero because when we set when we clear it rather when we clear it to zero then that will mean that the um the analog input function the adc is actually disabled and of course by default it is enabled because it's a one so you need to clear that now if you're not using any of the analog functions the easiest way is probably just going to do to be a clear f uh, instruction so you just clear the whole of the file so if you have a look at it's page 51 they actually give you an example of how to initialize port a for digital io so first of all they go uh they select port a, a bank that contains port, port a so yep so that should be quite straightforward for everyone and then they're clearing all the data in port a okay so that's clear f now i don't know why they do this because they could just use a clear f again they are well i know that you have to you have to uh select uh bank um the bank which contains and so i get that but then what they're doing is they're moving a literal value of all zeros into the working file register and then they're moving that into analog select personally i wouldn't do it that way i would just do a, a clear f um and so okay and i know that that actually works okay it's exactly the same thing because there's no difference between uh, moving a load of zeros into a file register or clearing all of the bits in that file register so absolutely the same okay um and and then uh then you can uh, configure the uh, tris a as you want okay for inputs and outputs Okay, so I mean that's that. Hopefully, that's fairly straightforward. Not difficult to do at all. And so my board, which is just a little test, that's just started again. You'll see that I'm just um, toggling LEDs on and off there. Okay, so I will now. Uh, I'm going to pause here, and then I'll go to uh, show you what's on my screen with MPLabX, and I'll briefly show you the code. But um, I think you should be all right with uh, if you're one of my students. Hopefully, developing that yourself. Okay, we're now looking at MPLabX IDE, the code for uh, what I showed you earlier. And so here's all my code. I'm not going to go through it in detail. Uh, there's probably no need. But here's my uh, main block of code, I suppose you could call it. And so the first thing is going to be to call the initialization routine. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, then I do use the bank cell directive to select port A. Now, because port A and port B are in the same bank, I haven't then um used a bank cell port b uh, prior to this code it's, you don't need to because they're in the same bank okay so then i'm clearing all the bits all this so basically i set all the outputs to uh, logic low and i set one of them to a logic high and uh, that's in port a and then in port b i'm setting two of the bits to a logic high and the others are logic low and then this um, com f that complements the values. To complement the value means to flip the values or to negate the or inverse or however you want to express it. So it's going to flip those values and then there's a delay. I call the delay subroutine and then 
I just go back to the loop. OK, let's have a look then at the initialization routine. Scroll on up. Here we go. OK, this is my initialization routine. And so, yeah, first of all, set the oscillator frequency. Nothing special there. And then I'm going to clear any output that might be in uh, port A or port B latches. And then I select the and the bank which contains the AND cell register, the analog select register. And then I, I clear all the bits in that file register. OK, now, if you remember, if you clear them or if you um, clear them to zero, I was going to say set them to zero. You shouldn't really say set to zero because set is set to a one, whereas clear is to a zero. So if you clear them to a zero, then that specifies that that bit or well, each one of those bits is going to be for digital I.O. rather than analog. And then I choose the bank containing Tris A, which may very well be the same bank, but it doesn't hurt to do a bank cell. And then I clear all the bits in my Tris A. And of course, you know that if you clear a bit in the Tris A register, a zero is the is specifying output. And if I set, then it will be input, but I want them all to be output. And then uh, because I want some of the bits to be input in Tris B, well, those ones, so RP0 and RP1, I want to be input, all the others I want to be output. So that's what I do there. Um, I've temporarily commented out this code. That's for interrupts when I write them. And then I just um, make sure that I'm in port B. You don't have to have that there, but that's what I've got. OK, so that's the code. And I hope that it is useful. All right, thanks very much for watching.